Sometimes in the modern world, a cataclysm opens portals, leading monsters to invade Earth. Leveling emerged in reality, forcing people into a new era. A world revolving around what level you are. The higher you are, the better. In a cave, we see a horrific monster whose level is unknown. The man looking at the monster is only level 457, unsure if it could even be defeated. The member tells him that they should leave. He tells them to leave and that if the boss got out, it would destroy Soul. The members leave him behind, trying to stall, he charges at the monster. Just as he is about to hit the boss. He is attacked from the side by the monster's claw. After being hit, he survives with only 5% of his health and complains that if only his level were higher, he might stand a chance. As the boss is about to finish him off, he closes his eyes and accepts his fate. He hears a clanking sound as if the attack had been blocked. He sees a man in a black hoodie in front, holding a short, glowing blade, easily blocking the boss's attack. He wondered how he might have been able to block such an attack with a small sword. The man in the hoodie, who had just found his prey, questioned why the boss was hiding in a pathetic dungeon. As the boss swings his other blade at the man, the man evades, jumps up on the boss's large hands, and rushes toward the boss's head. The man making a swift but powerful swing takes the boss's head right off. The team leader asked who and what level the man was. The man in the black hoodie replied that he was level 1. We see a man looking at his phone at how to be a successful hunter. The article explains that he hadn't tried hard enough and put in enough effort. The man throws his phone in a rage. We can see that he is still in a dungeon, with a corpse still lying around. He had spent seven years trying to become a good hunter, but the results disappointed him. The reason he failed so hard was because of the hunter exam. In the early stages, with a low level, it was impossible to defeat the assigned monster for the exam task. Those with good equipment would swiftly clear out monsters, bringing the exam to an end with nothing for him to do. The fact that he had to work many part-time jobs just to secure equipment exhausted him. Just as he is mopping around, an older man tells him to come to him. He yells at him for taking a break and that he should return to the starting point to turn in his loot. The older man questioned if he wanted to participate in the boss raid. The young man, Li Jian Wu, knows that the hunter supervisor is lying to him and that they only take those who are rich. Li apologizes and heads toward the main entrances. We see, in front of the portal, a group of people waiting around. Outside the crowd, his old high school friend, who was waiting for him, greets him. His old friend, Kim Minsik, asked if he had leveled up yet. Li asked why there were only a few people, mostly low-level players. This friend tells him the guild has taken a quest for an A-rank dungeon, so there weren't many high-level players with them, so the guild gave up on the D-rank dungeon to the remaining guild members. They're excited that they'll have a chance to level up, they high-five. Lee begins to worry about what level the members are at. That fact is, if you want to take on the boss with lower-level players, they at least need two hunters of level 100. Lee walks towards a guy wearing high-level gear, the guy who is getting carried. Lee greets him, asking if he has any experience with the boss. The man thinks he is just being worried and tells him that even if he lacks experience, he can compensate by relying on his gear. That man's name is Choi Yeyoung, the grandson of the chairman of a mid-size company, his leveling only being 55. Lee thought that this situation was still insufficient, he could only believe in the hunter supervisor, who was level 205, to cover for the absence of power. Lee knows that bosses should never be done solo, having to deal with the boss and its minions, if not dealt with fast, could just become monster food for the boss. The boss they had to deal with also had a self-destructive skill that activated if it had low health after a period of time. The supervisor tells the member to start heading into the portal, with Lee unable to back out. Just as they were about to head in, Choi asked if he wanted to team up. Lee's friend agrees, wanting to make a connection with someone with a strong background, giving them more opportunities. As they all head in, Lee has an ominous gut feeling that goes through the gate. Inside the gate, they had lowered the boss's health, but the minor mobs were too many and higher level than was thought and kept swarming them. Lee was unsure if they could hold off so many skeletons. His friend pushes the skeleton away and tells him to go join the main boss's fight. Not having much of a choice, he and Choi begin to support the supervisor. As they are trying their best to finish the boss, they see the timer for the self-destruct go down. Lee, seeing this, tells the supervisor that it is not possible and that they need to retreat. The supervisor ignores what Lee says, telling them that they can do it. While thinking that this is the wrong move, Lee is attacked by a skeleton from behind, which he dodges. He ends up defeating the skeleton, but he sees a lot more coming toward him. The supervisor wondered why the members weren't holding them off, he saw them all wounded or dead on the ground. Seeing how deadly the situation was, the supervisor called a retreat. As they are leaving, Choi is stabbed through the leg, and Lee quickly deals with the skeleton. 
the supervisor begins to clear a path out for them, seeing the self-destruct timer going down, he knows they didn't have much time. Lee sprinted to the portal while carrying Choi. Just as they are about to run out of time, Choi, as if he is insane, kicks Lee backward, and with the timer running out, the dungeon caves explode. As everything turned black, Lee saw his younger self with his parents. He remembers that he wanted to be a hunter so that he could help his poor family. His parents asked him why he was lying down, and Lee forced his eyes to open. He sees that he is still alive under a rubble of rocks. He hears shouting from inside the dungeon from his friend. The supervisor saw the item that had dropped because Lee was still inside when the boss had exploded. Troy pretends to feel guilty, making Lee, who hears this, get pissed off. Just then the cave started to collapse, and the supervisor told them they must go. Lee tries his best to scream for help, but with no use. His friend cried in tears, leaving the gate with Lee trapped and unable to leave. Lee, under all the rubble, wondered what had just gone wrong and why Choi had betrayed him. Just as he was giving up, he heard his parents asking him if that was what he wanted. Lee opens his eyes, determined to get out alive. Lee, checking his status, sees that he has little health left. He squirms to turn on the light on his phone. As he was wondering if it was possible to get out of this situation, he felt a gust of wind, suggesting that there was an escape somewhere. Lee slowly starts to crawl with limited space. Lee pushes the rocks in front of him, making a small gap he can crawl out of. Seeing that he had somehow entered a dungeon hall, he saw a portal at the end with no enemies around. Checking the portal status, he sees that it was a rank SS dungeon. Lee saw that it was a rank SS dungeon, which even top hunters wouldn't take on. He pretends to not see it and runs in a different direction, saying that he'll deal with the collapsed dungeon. Just then, a rock fell, and the entire hall of the roof started to fall. Lee, having no choice, runs back to the portal to enter. Lee enters the dungeon and rolls down flat on his face in front of what seems to be a grave. Lee looked around to see a shadow, wondering if it was a monster. He saw that the level status was blue, meaning that it was a person. Lee assumed that it was a hero trying to clear the dungeon and that he would be saved. He runs toward the figure, asking for help, but just then he is blinded by a bright light. Lee questioned why the man hadn't moved yet. As he gets closer, the man shows a bright light and says the same thing again. Lee realized it was an NPC since the world had turned into a game where NPCs could show up in dungeons. Lee begins to troll the NPC, making it repeat the same actions. Just then, the NPC yells at him to stop, surprising Lee. The NPC asks himself after acting like an NPC that he just stuck to a monotonous repeat. The NPC asks Lee what his level is. Lee tells him that he is level 46, to which the NPC replies that he knows and asks Lee how such a low level was about to get there. Lee asks him who he is, and he replies that he is something like an NPC. Lee asks if there is any way for him to leave the dungeon. The NPC tells him that the only way to leave is to clear the dungeon himself. Just as Lee is feeling discouraged, the NCP tells him not to worry. The NPC tells him that no matter what level the person is at, he will have to rely on luck. He tells him that already being in the dungeon itself is somewhat lucky. The NPC cheers him on, saying that he may even get lucky and take the hidden item. The NPC says that his time is up and starts to fly up, disappearing in blinding light. Lee saw that he had been given a quest to find a weapon. Lee, hearing the NPC once more, tells him to keep an eye on the sky as a tip. Lee, looking at the sky, begins to see tons of weapons falling from the sky. He barely dodges every weapon falling. If a single one of them hit him, his health would go to zero. Just as he thinks he is safe, wondering why the sky is turning dark, he looks up to see a giant, raging bull. He screams that this is ludicrous. 